Warning, this video contains clips and excerpts of a humorous nature not normally found in math class. These are intended to fight the adolescent condition known as short attention span, found heavily in the modern teen, especially when in school. The only thing you should attempt at home is the math. The rest, you just laugh at. Hi, welcome to AT Math. Today we're learning 4-3 writing functions. Why more fun than trying to trick a frog with an iPod. And we're back. First thing we're going to learn is the equation. The equation is y equals mx plus b. To understand what y equals mx b means, first you have x, which you remember is the independent variable. In other words, that's the number you choose. It could be 1, it could be 5, it could be 100. You decide. Because of what you choose, and based on this stuff, we'll determine the result, which is the dependent variable, which is the reaction to the x value. Remember that if x, then y. Action, reaction, cause, effect. So we have y equals mx plus b. Now the m in front of the x, the m is the slope, which is what you multiply by. The b is the intercept, which is where you start with. Let me explain. If you graph this on a graph, okay, the intercept's going to tell you how high or how low from 0, 0 your line's going to start. And your slope will determine what the direction is, whether it's going to be steep or shallow. Example, suppose you make eight dollars an hour at your job. Well, you control how many hours you work. Actually, your hiring manager probably controls, your scheduling manager controls how many hours you work. But you get a certain amount per hour. That's your uh, rate, your pay rate. In this case, we'll say you make eight dollars an hour. Based on your rate, which is eight dollars an hour, and based on how many hours you work, will determine your y value, which is how much you make. So x is how many hours you worked, m is the rate of what you get paid, and y is the total pay you receive for those hours worked. So y equals eight x. So what if you worked for six hours? Well, you still have your y equals eight x, but instead of the x, you now have a six. So eight times six becomes do 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 forty eight. Now take a look at a table here. We have y, x and y, and y equals 8x. All we're doing here is we're posting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, how many hours you might have worked, and because of how many hours you worked, based on the rate, we'll determine how much you get paid. Hour gives you $8, 2 gives you 16, etc. x is hours worked, y is money made. Now, what if I get a table? Can I find the relationship? Well. In this case here, x, we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. And y, we have 11, 15, 19, 23. The question becomes, how can I find why 1 becomes 11, or 2 becomes 15, or so on? Well, as long as the equation is linear, in other words, it's some sort of straight line, this is actually quite easy. From the 4, you have to pick two columns. So any two columns will work. Normally, I pick the smallest numbers possible. So the y value here, I have 15 and 11, 2 and 1. To understand what's happening is I'm at 1 over 11 up, and now I'm at 2 over 15 up. So I measure the y value first. I was at 11, and now I'm at 15. So I went up 1, 2, 3, 4. And the x value, I was at 1, and then I moved to 2. So I moved over 1. So basically, we're just going to take the difference of y and the difference of x. So to begin with, I'm going to take where I'm now versus where I was. So 15 minus 11 over 2 minus 1. 15 minus 11 is 4, so the vertical rise of 4. And 2 minus 1 is 1, so it's a y x difference of 1. So the slope equals rise over run. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, rise over run. So what you do again is the first x was where you started, second is where you let, came to, first y is where you started, second y is where you ended up. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 15 minus 11 is 4, 2 minus 1 is 1, 
4 divided by 1, because remember top divided by bottom equals 4. So the slope is 4. Rise of 4, run of 1, 4 divided by 1 is 4. Time for a commercial. And we're back. So the slope is 4, I said. If you remember from last time, 4 over 1. So when I have y equals, and remember this is m, x plus b, now m is now 4. So that's easy. Now you should be able to pick any x from the graph. So now I have y equals 4x plus b. I should be able to pick any x I want and stick them in here. And times it by 4, and I'll figure out why the y is what it is. Take this example. I have y equals 4x plus b. Again, why is it 4? Because I found that slope from this guy, rise over run. Now, if I have that, I'll plug in this generic x here. So this x was 1. So now 4 times 1 is 4 plus b. 4 times 1 is, um, excuse me, 11 equals 4 times 1 is 4 plus b. Take a look here. To get b by itself, instead of plus 4, I'm minus 4. Minus 4 to this side. 11 minus 4 is 7, and this cancels, leaving just the b. So now, b equals 7. So now I get y equals 4x plus 7. So, if you notice, I now have y equals 4x plus 7. It really ought to work with any number, any of these sets here. Take the second one. Let's plug in the 2 where the x is. Well, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 7 does make 15. And 3 times 4 is 12, plus 7 is 19. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 7 is 23. And if you notice here, I did the first one over again. 11 equals 4 times 1 is 4, plus b. Instead of plus 4, minus 4, and b equals 7. And if you notice as we plug it in, as I mentioned, all four work. As I plug in the 1, 2, 3, 4 times the 4 plus the 7, they all reach the appointed numbers. So the equation for this table is simply y equals 4x plus 7. Pretty easy peasy. Now you try. Go ahead and plug these in. How again, you might say, wait a minute, first I have to find two sets of columns. They don't even have to be the same ones. Just to prove my point, I'll pick the hardest two. I'll pick this set in this set, because they're split and they're far apart. But take y2 minus y1, so you're going to take 42 minus 24, and we're going to take 4 minus 1. Remember that if I start with this guy and go over, I got to start with this guy and go over, hint, I could actually even do 24 minus 42, but then I have to put 1 minus 4, so it doesn't even matter which one you start with, but you have to start the same way both times. So 42 minus 24 is, let's see here, I believe it's 18, if the old brain's still working, it is Friday night. And then 4 minus 1 is 3. So 18 divided by 3, I'm getting as a 6. So now, with the slope I just used, y equals mx plus b, the m is now a 6. So y equals 6x plus b. And now, I should be able to plug in any one. I'll plug in the easiest, which is a 1 here. So 6 times 1 is 6 plus b equals 24. If that's true, then instead of plus 6, I'm now going to minus 6. 24 minus 6 is 18 equals b. So if I'm right, the b is 18. So if I go back up here, remember how I had the slope is 6. Well, OK. Y now equals 6x plus my b this time of 18. You might want to rewind this once to make sure that you kind of see what I'm doing because it's easy to get confused. Don't feel bad if you did. Go ahead and rewind it this time and take a look. All right, well, if you're following along, I'm assuming that you rewound it if you needed to, so I'm going to go ahead. y equals 6x plus 18. When I plug a 1 in, 1 times 6 is 6, plus 18 is 24. 2 times 6 is 12, plus 18 is 30. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 18 is 36. And 4 times 6 is 24, plus 18 is 42. So we had that. Very good. Time for a commercial. <laughs> and we're back. 
And when you see this, we have 2 comma 5, 5 comma 17, 7 comma 25, and 20 comma 77. Really don't matter which two you pick there either. I'll pick the first two for simplicity's sake. Really, the first letter member is the X, second's the Y. First is the X, second's the Y. I'll start with this guy, so I'll take 17 minus 5 over 5 minus 2. 17 minus 5 is 12. 5 minus 2 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So I know my slope's going to be 4. So y equals now not mx, but 4x plus b. I still don't know what my b is, but I am going to solve that pretty quickly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in any of these numbers. This is the easiest. I'll plug in, excuse me, that should mean m, that should mean x. Whoops. So if at home you were telling me that should have been an x, my answer to you is, yeah, you're right. Let me try that again. How about 4x plus b, because the 4 was the m. So I'll plug the 2 in where the x belongs. 2 times 4 is 8. So now y equals 8 plus b, and the y in this case was 5. So, to get b by itself instead of plus 8, I'm going to minus 8, minus 8 to one side, minus 8 to the other. 5 minus 8 is negative 3. So b equals negative 3. If that's true, though, I should be able to replace that and put a negative 3, and I should be able to make them all work now. Go ahead and rewind if you're not sure how I did that. Okay, if you're here, I'm assuming you rewound it if you needed to. We'll plug in the different numbers. If x is 2, 4 times 2 is 8, minus 3 is 5. If x is 5, 5 times 4 is 20, minus 3 is 17. 7 times 4 is 28, minus 3 is 25. And 20 times 4 is 80, minus 3 is 77. So please notice that they all fit. Quick review, how did I do it? I took 17 minus 5, which is 12, and 5 minus 2, which is 3, right here. 17 minus 5 is 12, 5 minus 2 is 3. 12 divided by, four, 12 divided by 3 is 4. So my slope was 4. So now, I went ahead and plugged in, if you remember, y equals mx plus b, but m is now a 4, x plus b. I picked any number. I went ahead and plugged it in. 4 times 7 is 28. So that became, let's see, so I got 28. And I knew that I had to minus 3 to make 28 into a 25. So you got that. So y equals 4x minus 3. Now, you know what? Let's do a quick break. <laughs> and we're back. If this equation is true, then it should work for all four. Now you notice if I, if you remember, I had y equals four x minus three. If that's true, I should be able to plug in the two, five, seven, and twenty like I did earlier. Notice how when I plug them in, they do work to all these numbers. Now do a U try. Pick any two. You might want to put them in order might be easier for you. Find the slope and make the equation. Go ahead. Let's see what you got. I can pick any two I want, so I'm going to pick the easiest two, which are the ones without negatives in my mind. So I'll pick 9 minus 5 and 0 minus 2. 9 minus 5 is 4. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 4 minus negative 2 is negative 2, so in this case I have y equals negative 2x plus b. But if that's true, I should be able to plug them in and find out what's what. So I'll pick the easiest one, which is this. Yes, very funny. What, what? So my son there. Plug here. So negative 2 times 2 plus b has to equal the y, which is 5. So 5 equals negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4, plus b. To get b by itself, instead of minus 4, you add 4. Add 4 to one side, add 4 to the other. 9 equals b. So that's what I have. So now, instead of the b here, it's saying I have 9. Let's plug them in, though, to make sure that's true. All right. So I'll plug in the first one. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and negative 4 plus 9 is 5. 15 times negative 2 is negative 30, plus 9 is negative 21. Negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 9 is 9, and 9 times negative 2 is negative 18, plus 9 is still negative 9. So it all fits. By the way, 
when you see f of x equals 2x plus 1, anytime you see this f of x, all f of x means is y. Because it really just means y like this. Why does f of x mean y? Because f of x means the function of x, or the result of x. So when you see f of x, it just means y. It's easy, because that's your result. Quick break. And we're back. And we're back. Now, when you need to identify the independent and dependent variable, let's take this sentence. An employee receives two vacation days for each month worked. Now the question is, which one makes the other one possible? Is it how many months you worked determine how many vacation days, or how many vacation days determine how many months you worked? Which is basically what I said there. I hope that you know that you have to see how many months you worked to figure out how many vacation days you've earned. So each month will be determined how many months did you go to work. You know you get two days per month. So then you go ahead and say, well, depends on how many months I worked, which is the independent variable, will determine how many vacation days I get, which is the dependent variable. My number of vacation days is dependent on how many months I actually made it to work. So in this case, x, which is how many months I worked, independent variable, 2x equals the y, which is how many vacation days I get. Now, suppose each small size bottle of water costs a buck ninety-nine. Now, you can't control how much you're paying for the b bottle of water. It's going to be a dollar ninety-nine. So, what we have here, though, is we're saying that each small size bottle costs a buck ninety-nine. So, the slope's a dollar ninety-nine. The a, and the y, therefore, is how much you have to pay. So, again, this is just saying the same thing. The independent variable is how many you buy. Well, we don't know, so we'll put x, and y is how much you pay. Uh, we won't do a few problems of homework. We'll just go ahead and do some in uh, class tomorrow. Thanks again for watching. You may want to watch this twice as this was a little more difficult of material. Remember, you can always take notes for 10 points extra credit with your U-tries. Thanks again. Here's a short clip. Bye for now.